Welcome to Forum 360, a global outlook with a local view. I'm your host, Pat Simons. In Northeast Ohio, we are fortunate to have public access to some unique and beautiful locations. One of these is Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens, located in Akron, Ohio. Originally, it was the home of the Cyberlink family, co-founders of Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Completed in 1920, this landmark is the sixth largest historic home in the nation open to the public, along with its historic buildings and 70 beautifully landscaped acres. On top of all that, it is an accredited museum of the American Alliance of Museums. It is my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Sean Joyce, Stan Hewitt's new president and executive director who serves this wonderful property. Welcome, Sean. Thank you, thank you for having me. Well, you're welcome and congratulations on your new position. Thank you. We're very excited to get to know you and to get some updates. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I love talking about Stan Hewitt, of course. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I'm sure that each president slash executive director brings his or her stamp to the job. Wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your background leading to this position, your experience, and if you have a personal philosophy that you bring to the Stan Hewitt work. Well, yeah, I've you know I've got quite a diverse um, timeline of experience. Of course, I'm sure many have seen it, you know, published. But um, yeah, I really came from for profit. You know, most of my career I was in uh, mostly the parking business and. Mm. Uh, Got involved with a lot of big business, you know, transactions and helping build a company from you know half a billion dollars to a five billion dollar organization over about a five year period. So, uh, you know, got really inundated into big business for you know uh, bulk of my career, and then uh, really kind of evolved and you know started uh, you know having children and decided you know I wanted to be more involved and and do something with the community and. Uh, really uh, jumped right in with Goodwill Industries as CFO for okay. three years in Akron, and then had the opportunity to join Stan Hewitt um, in 2010 oh, to okay. help, you know, kind of change the direction of the organization with their new leader at the time, Linda Kindride. Okay. And so, uh, you know, really that perspective, though, um, coming from for-profit to nonprofit, especially during challenging times, um, really helped kind of bring this more of a for-profit philosophy as far as the business side of things and really trying to find a way to make the most we can with what the organization has to offer. Of course, Stan Hewitt having just a rich history for one in Akron um, and just an amazing, beautiful place that people really care about, there's a lot to work with. So um, you know, I've kind of brought that with me and my love for the community uh, just is a great tie-in. So it's a really been a win-win for me. Oh, that's fantastic. It sounds like a really good combination and right. a good match. Yes. It's really hard to believe that a lot of people may not know about Stan Hewitt. I wonder if you could talk about the times, the trends, and a little bit about the Cyberling um, lifestyle that brought them to the point of building this type of home. And I wonder if you could tell us how many acres were included. Yes, yeah, so uh, you know the home was built from 1912 to 1915. Uh, you can imagine it being in a massive place as it is. It took three years to build, uh, and really, you know, the Cyberlink, uh, Cyberlings were in Akron already, living in a modest home over on Market Street, oh. <laughs> and while FA was building Goodyear, and uh, of course, Goodyear was a you know major player in, in the change of the in industry in. Uh, industrialists in um, the United States, but as well as Akron, the rubber industry just taking off and exploding. So, um, as was custom, a lot of the industrialists back in the day, they were started building these large estates. And uh, um, the Cyberlings, I think, did it for um, several different reasons, though, not just as a status thing, but, you know, F.A. and Gershaw really were family driven. Um, you know, they had six children, most of them, most of which had grown by then, um, but had married or so forth, and they wanted to be able to host their family as well as oh. hold events socially. Mm -hmm. um, they did do that, you know, mm -hmm. have, um, had presidents, they've had the Von Trapp family perform there, they, um, you know, he was friends with Charles Dickens, they had um, balls and parties all the time, and uh, so they really developed this estate 
to uh, kind of incorporate that philosophy in that living. And also they're um, entrenched in um, recreation. So a lot of the, the nature of the estate itself, the grounds especially, were kind of surrounded by opportunities to do activities, whether it was um, golfing or you know lawn bowling or the pool, which is in the house, which mm -hmm. is very rare, tennis courts. Um, you know, all those things really kind of fed into how they wanted to live. And they had quite a large property, uh, almost 1,500 acres, right. um, which a, a big chunk of that was used for farming. Hmm. Uh, you know, F.A., uh, his father and brother, their family uh, started in the farm implement uh, oh, industry, you know, selling tractors and mowers and, and those things. So F.A. had some expertise in the area, so actually produced... Uh, agriculture and uh, had a poultry house and you know the, and the greenhouse for growing citrus and I'm um, really again lived um, using, using the land as well so really well-rounded philosophy. That's very interesting because it, it's so grand you just think of it <coughs> as a place for just celebrations and galas but right. it was actually a good combination of working and I want to correct myself I had mentioned that it was completed in 1920. That is incorrect. You said 19. Yeah, a little bit earlier. Okay. But <laughs> pretty close. Well, I want to make sure I, I'm representing <coughs> that. Um, now, there's there are historic things, the, the guests you talked about, but also Founders Day yes. is associated with yeah. Stan Hewitt and very much a part of its history. Can you talk about Founders Day and what that means? Yeah, so um, the other great thing about this family is they use you know their. Um, level of hierarchy in the community and their resources to create and be involved with a lot of things that the community really needed. And one of those um, just so happened was AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, which was um, laid out and developed by uh, Dr. Bob and Bill W. at okay. Stan Hewitt in the Gate Lodge. Uh, Henrietta Cyberling back in Mother's Day of 1935 arranged for a meeting of the two, which oh, wow. um, those gentlemen were both suffering from alcoholism. Mm. And uh, they had only planned to meet for a couple of hours, and here they went through the whole night and laid out the landscape of the program for Alcoholics Anonymous, which is still used today. So, so just we one <coughs> more aspect of the wonderful oh, that's right. trajectories this family right. goes in. And right. I was also uh, wanted to mention about their grandson, U.S. Congressman John Cyberling right. is from that brood, yep. and he was <laughs> known as a great con conservationist, and he was one of the major players in the development of the Cuyahoga Valley uh, National Park. And so, talking again about the family, are there any Cyberlings living on the grounds, and what is their status? Do they still hold any ownership <coughs> to the property? Yeah, so uh, no one lives on the grounds any longer, including the family. So um, uh, Irene was the last relative to live on the property. Actually, she stayed in the gate lodge mm. till uh, I think it was 1999, which she passed away. She was 109 years old, so wow. <laughs> um, but still full of, uh, what I hear, full of a lot of energy and vigor at that time. But yeah, no, none of the family um, live on the property. There is no ownership as well. Um, they're pretty much involved from a volunteer level oh, or nice. support us, you know, some support us uh, as donors or members. So we can uh, still kind of feel their spirit yeah, in the place. Yeah, definitely. It's still definitely. very much. And we still, you know, very much infused. capture kind of some of their stories from the past. We're fortunate we have everything from the family, you know, that they donated over in 1957. Oh, boy, so we have a lot of resources. Fortunate. Very yes. fortunate. Stan Hewitt, when you're looking at the manor house, which is stunning, you see lots of bricks, you see lots of mortar, stone, slate, you see thousands of leaded window panes. Right. And then you go inside and you see all this handcrafted wood and plaster work, you see antique furnishings and fabrics. How the heck <laughs> do you keep all of that up? Well, I mean, that is one of the biggest challenges of any historic home and museum is really trying to preserve and restore the property. And of course, we all, a lot of us have homes, we know how much it costs oh, yeah. to keep those maintained. Imagine a 64,000 square foot, you know, 102 year old manor home, uh, actually going 103, um, that has all that rich uh, material in it. And uh, it is quite an undertaking. But um, we're fortunate that um, you know, have great staff 
great experts. You know, we uh, have our own architects and uh, construction manager um, that help us keep on top of those things. So you must have, what I've watched over the years is it's like a planned attack. Yeah. You look at the biggest need at the time and you, you work on that. And I guess my other question is, in order to make authentic repair and upgrading um, really requires uh, craftspeople. Who, can you find them? I yeah. mean, how easy it is it to well, find them? Well, definitely, and uh, you know, first from the financial stand, standpoint, we're, we're forced to the state of Ohio and citizens in, of the state of Ohio and donors have been supportive of us, you know, keeping up that maintenance because those are some big ticket items sometimes. And, uh, but yeah, we, we have a prior t prioritization schedule, you know, for what we know and can mm -hmm. anticipate, obviously, you always get those surprises, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. which we try to plan <laughs> from an operations standpoint, be ready for. Um, but yeah, the craftsmen, we're fortunate over the years, we've been able to find those experts uh, and they take great care. And I think we're fortunate that the folks we work with have a lot of pride tied to working at working for Stan Hewitt. And, and it's exciting for them to work on those materials and be in the house and or, or work on things outside the house because they're so special and unique to what happens today. They're, you don't have that kind of craftsmanship anymore. No, and, and it's part of history and thousands of people get to right. see your work. And right. I was noticing associated with those that type of activity, there's the ARRC Inc. Yeah. What does that stand for? Well, uh, <laughs> so one of the things when I when I came into Stan Hewitt um, was trying to take this this for profit that Stan Hewitt owned that was formed in 2003, which we call ARC, we shorten it up. But um, ARC stands for Architectural Restoration Renovation Consultants Inc. So just rolls right off the tongue, right? So <laughs> uh, one of my first editions was to just kind of shorten that up. So we call it ARC, ARC Inc. And uh, basically, um, we it's a for profit firm that we own. We use our expertise over the years for restoration. Oh, okay. And we basically service out that expertise to Very other historic property owners, oh. whether it's um, historic um, societies like uh, Summit County Historical Society, uh, you know, the John Brown House, and uh, we we'll help uh, organizations like that, or a lot of um, homeowners. There's, you know, a number of historic properties or even older homes, whatever it is you have, that we could bring the expertise in and assess your situation, tell you what needs oh. to be done if you want to keep it in a certain period or style. And then we bring those resources. As you mentioned, yeah. it's hard to find craftsmen you can trust on that type of work. So we have those resources. And so uh, we're able to give you an idea what your budget would be. We also help get properties actually historically registered as well. Wow. And from a commercial standpoint, work on tax credit opportunities because there is funding available through the state and the federal government to help. Uh, repair or restore um, historic properties. I think what you're describing is a little known fact that people may not it understand is. that that's it what is. that is. Definitely. For those of you who have just tuned in to Forum 360, we are visiting with Sean Joyce, the new President and Executive Director of Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens in Akron, Ohio. Um, the grounds themselves, yes. the landscaping required of the 70 acres, is that the same kind of process? You prioritize areas that need repairs or you want to bring back a historical <coughs> authenticity to the landscaping? Yeah, definitely. When it comes to any um, replacement or overhaul, uh, we definitely have guidelines we're following. We're, we're fortunate that we have um, just some historically significant architects that did those designs or originally. Uh, Ellen Biddle Shipman, who um, designed the English Garden, which is our hidden garden. We have one of the few, if if any, fully restored and intact gardens of hers wow. in the country. Um, uh, so we want to keep that integrity. You know, Warren, Man Warren Manning's design across the property is just you know with the, all the aspects like the tea houses and the perimeter wall, um, all those things we uh, have worked to restore and maintain, and we have a plan to keep those looking a certain way, of course, that, and accurate. It's a big job. It is a big job. I wanted to talk a little <coughs> bit about the historic buildings. There is the yeah. fantastic uh, Corbin Conservatory, mm -hmm. beautiful jewel glass house. Uh, but I also wanted to talk about the coach house and the buildings near it. Mm -hmm. 
it forms a uh, reception kind of activity area, yeah. like you want to uh, get everybody together. But the one thing that's new there that is really significant is a new orientation center. Can yeah. you talk about that? Yeah, so um, one of the spaces that we utilize um, just past admissions, when you come in the doors of the carriage house and come through um, and check in and buy your tour, uh, we want to be able to give you some background as far as what you're going to experience. So we've always had this room just past before you go into the courtyard uh, where you could get a quick video and we have panels of information that you could um, you could read and, and can get your quick little snapshot of the family and the history before you go on your tour, so you have some background. So we've kind of revamped that this year, made, refreshed it all, made it easier to digest because one, we know you're eager to get on your tour, <laughs> but we also want to power with a lot of information. So, so it's been totally uh, simplified and redone and organized in a way that we think is much easier to understand. So we have a full uh, chronological timeline of the history of the family and the, the house and the estate. But below that, we also tell you what was happening in the world at that time. So it's really a good way to see kind of how the family was yeah. operating within all the events happening, of course, like the Great Depression, for one, was significant. So, uh, so and we have a little five-minute video that gives you some of the insight and includes um, narratives from the family as well. So, uh, a great little opportunity to get some information before you go on. It it's sounds like a, a great place to start your visit. Definitely. Um, I find it interesting that Stan Hewitt chooses an overarching theme each year. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, it's health and wellness, a life well lived. Right. And I know that your themes, you try to make them relevant to the Cyberlings lifestyle. Can you tell us what that's, what that's all about this year? Yeah, so health and wellness, um, as you mentioned, is our theme for the year. And what we try to do is there's so much history and so many things to talk about with the Cyberling family. And we have this amazing collection of items in the home that we try to focus in. So when you come as a visitor, we know, you know what we're trying to tell you, right? <laughs> and so we try to organize our plan. And so health and wellness um, really focus in, as I mentioned, the design of the property, you know, how the Cyberlings really cared about their health. and. And, you know, back in the early 1900s, just like today, there's all these fads, these health fads, diets, and things to do to keep yourself, in, you know, healthy and um, give you a good life. And so they really incorporated all those things throughout the property, whether it was in the home with the sleeping porches, like F.A. believed in sleeping outside in the winter. <laughs> that cold air was good for you. And talk about the swimming pool and all those things that you could do in the home, but outside, really kind of showing those activities, you know, the lagoons where they used to swim and ice skate. And we have trails throughout the property that we're really highlighting to really help you get a nature walk. And we're doing yoga in the garden yes, I um, once yoga. a month this year. And uh, we host vintage baseball and a lot of, really, again, this is kind of your playground, your backyard that you can use as, uh, you know, as someone in the community. So come use it. And we're trying to highlight those opportunities. I think that at one point, um, historically, uh, Stan Hewitt was kind of looked as a uh, quiet contemplation observation, but you're, you've changed <coughs> into this interactive environment, and I think that's important for people to understand right. that change. I just wanted to go back for one second. You <coughs> mentioned the uh, vintage baseball. I just want to highlight that the Akron Black Stockings play and are sponsored by Stan Hewitt. It's taken out of the 1800s. Yeah. It's really an, a fun activity, and the public can set up their lawn chairs and watch. Um, getting back to the quiet observation and contemplation and the increased interact, interactivity of, of Stan Hewitt, I'd like you to talk a little bit more about what do you have for youth and what do you have for our furry friends? Oh, definitely. <laughs> so one of the, one of the areas we focused in uh, back in 2010, where I, Linda and I came into Stan Hewitt, is really what we noticed was missing was families. <clears throat> there wasn't enough to do for kids, and uh, you know, being a parent myself, you know, last thing you want is to come and you want to see a, take a tour as an adult and enjoy <laughs> the things you like, and you have a child that's trying to drag you out because they're bored <laughs> to tears. So. So we've really brought in a lot of opportunities for families to do some fun things, including um, we have our uh, play garden, uh, which is fully an active children's garden. It has everything from 
you know, bubbles that, sh that are triggered when the kid, when the children walk into the <laughs> garden to um, an, an old antique truck that they can start up. And um, I want to go. I know, right? <laughs> a bowling lawn, a 13-foot slide, and uh, you know, a splash fountain area to our butterfly homes of nature exhibit uh -huh. outside, which has got 400 butterflies in there that the kids can touch and and uh, you know, learn about uh, cocoons and the whole thing, the whole process, and the homes of nature area activity. Then we have a youth tour throughout the home now that's for, based on Franklin's perspective as a child mm -hmm. in Stan, at Stan Hewitt. Mm -hmm. Scavenger hunts, geocaching, and then of course all of our events are just amazingly you know, fun for kids, um, which starts off with our Easter egg hunt all the way through Deck the Hall at Christmas time where Santa's here every night. There is so much for youth there Definitely. now. I think it's, uh, that's an important thing for people to understand. Yeah. Something for <clears throat> everyone. If you want to bring your dog, there are wolf walks. Right. I mean, we're trying to incorporate. You're yeah, trying to incorporate. I didn't want to leave out our furry friends everybody. either. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely bring the other family member along that needs a leash. Um, and uh, that's on Wolf Walk Sunday. So every Sunday wolf you walk can bring Sunday. Your, your dog, except Keep for well, if mind. we have a special event going on. Well, speaking of special events, when you go to Stan Hewitt, you realize this is a prime, gorgeous location for lots of events. Right. Um, and I wonder if you could highlight a few of the things that happened through the year. Yeah, so June really kicks off that event season. Um, so we start off with Founders Day, as you mentioned, the celebration of Alcoholics Anonymous. We'll have 2,500 folks in recovery or impacted by um, addiction visiting Stan Hewitt. They get in for free. And we get, we get groups all the way from Poland, if you can believe it or not. So um, a lot, that's a really fun weekend. Um, followed up with Father's Day Car Show, which is over 60 years running. That's gotta be one of the longest running car shows. We'll have over 400 amazing cars. Winking Lizard will be, has huge grills, make up a bunch of food and plenty of beverage and great activities. Uh, you know, getting the Shakespeare in the garden in August and uh, July and August. So right after, right around July 4th. Um, they start their two shows, um, you know, uh, All's Well That Ends Well and uh, Romeo and Juliet, and then we have a week of Three Musketeers. So, uh, you know, then we lead right into fall. We have our light night show that starts up, actually it's early, late summer, August 16th through September 16th, our 3D projection show, and the gardens are all lit up in the evenings. It's beautiful, live music every night. To Ohio Mart, which is our big fall festival, um, you know, over 50 years in that event, four days of just great fun, 150 artisans yeah. to deck the hall, which starts right after Thanksgiving, goes through the end of the year. We end out with just an amazing it is, light show. So, there is something going yeah. on all the time. Yeah, and if uh, uh, you can also, you don't have to be a member to participate. Mm -hmm. You can come to these things and get admission, <laughs> get through admission. Um, also, if you want to rent space for weddings or galas, that's a beautiful situation for that. Definitely. I did want to talk just briefly about volunteers. Yes. Uh, places like Stan Hewitt probably could not operate without volunteers. Definitely and there was not. a wonderful uh, insert on March 31st in the Akron Beacon Journal, and I, I found it so endearing to see the tasks that volunteers contribute to right. Van, uh, Stan Hewitt. I wonder if you could just tell me very briefly, uh, it's on your website, yes. can they just uh, apply through the website to volunteer? Yes, they definitely can apply through the website. We have a volunteer coordinator that, that helps get them into where they'd like to volunteer as far as across the property. You're right, there's p tons of different experiences and um, opportunities for volunteers to gift their time and talent for sure. Uh, and uh, it's really a great place to be. It's just a beautiful backdrop and uh, you get, you know, to be able to be around some, so much rich history and get, you know, get some access, quite frankly, that the normal guests can't, obviously, to and be make, around And make it. new friends. And make new friends. <laughs> and we have over 600 volunteers, which is pretty incredible. And uh, it's just an amazing place. To, and we love our volunteers, for sure. Thank you. I think it says it all when I yes. read that article. Um, I do want to talk about membership briefly. Here is a sample of the absolutely extraordinary magazine that you put out, high quality throughout. Um, there are membership perks yes. that you can get. Uh, when you go to Stan Hewitt, for the most part, there's always free parking. Um, if there's a special event, you will offer free shuttles. 
Um, if you're hungry, there's a cafe for light meals, and there's a wonderful gift shop. Yep. And you get a 10% off as a member. You do not have to be a member to go to Stan Hewitt and participate, but membership is a really nice way to support um, the Holland Gardens. You're open from April through December. Correct. Um, and if you want to know more about open hours and events, they can go to your website. Um, I am going to just mention your website and we'll scroll it as well. Sure. Stan Hewitt, lowercase, dot org. Very That's simple. It. It's been a pleasure getting to know Mr. Sean Joyce, the new president and executive director of Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens, located in Akron, Ohio. We wish him well. If you have, a, have been a visitor to Stan Hewitt, I hope you'll go again. It changes with the seasons and there's always something new to explore. If you've never visited, you are in for a treat. This is Pat Simons for Forum 360, a global outlook with a local view. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Forum 360 is brought to you by Electrical Impulse Communications, the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, an anonymous donor, the Jewish Community Board of Akron, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Blue Green, and Forum 360 supporters.